The New York Jets are over 500 after their Week 5 home victory over the Miami Dolphins. And New York Post sports columnist Steve Serby, he was in the building to witness the Gang Green win. And Steve, he joins me now. Steve, good to see you. Got the flannel shirt, the hoodie. That means you are in press box attire, I shall say. Yes, yes. Well, for me, it's press box attire, not for, for anyone else. But, yeah, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some new flannels this week, and I may even – I mean, even I'd like to see you in a flannel, Vex. Okay, you know what? We we're gonna have to maybe do something yeah. where we get a little flannel, sport jacket, blazer combo. Uh, we we got something. We both rock plaid together in an interview, but now we got to get some flannel in here. We'll, we'll we'll make it work. But we're here to talk about Good. the Jets today with the Jets Sunday. Steve Brees, the Beast Hall. He did it all for the Jets, running and catching the ball. So how good can this rookie running back be for New York? He can be real good, and the Jets absolutely love this kid. He was the best running back in the draft, a dual threat in the locker room after the game. I was talking to several Jet defenders, actually. Sauce Gardner compared him to Shady McCoy and Sheldon Rankins, who uh, a, is a seven-year vet. He compared Brees Hall with his power and his smooth running style and his elusiveness to guys like Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, and even Zeke, Ezekiel Elliott. Um, 97 yards rushing today, two catches for 100 yards, two near touchdowns, and finally they let the kid score from the five-yard line after Michael Carter, his buddy, vultured two touchdowns from the one-yard line. But, you know, Brees Hall can be a quarterback's best friend, especially a young quarterback like Zach Wilson. This kid's the real deal. All right, we're going to talk about Zach Wilson right now, Steve. No touchdowns thrown for Zach Wilson in his second start of the season, but he did rush for a touchdown. So what do you make of the performance that we saw from Zach Wilson in Week 5? Well, aside from a 17-yard uh, sack, which a quarterback never should take, Zach is composed. He's showing a lot of poise. He's showing command of the huddle, command of the offense. He didn't try to do too much. Remember last year he tried to play hero ball. Now he's he's showing more calm. He's not as frenetic as he used to be. He seems to be going through his progressions better. And like I said, when you got a running back like Brees Hall, you can manage the game and win the game that way. So that's what Zach Wilson's doing. Now, of course, next week he gets to meet his idol, Aaron Rodgers. That may be a different story. All right, that should be an interesting one there. And I'm not sure about you, Steve. A lot of people didn't have the Jets pegged for a 3-2 record after five games this season, but here we are. Should fans start believing that this team can actually make some noise in 2022? Well, look, the Jets are clearly better than they were a year ago. They clearly have more talent. Any week, any one of their rookies can go off. This week, it was it was Hall, Brees the Beast. Uh, Sauce Gardner set the tone with a sack of Teddy Bridgewater, knocked him out of the game at the same time. Garrett Wilson was only targeted four times this week. But next week, it could be him. And what's interesting is Sauce told me after the game that the entire rookie class – during the week has a group chat where they pick each other up, they talk football, they joke around, and they didn't know how the veterans were going to treat them coming in. Turns out the veterans all took them under, uh, took the rookies under their wing, and everything is rosy. But I think it's pretty cute that the rookies have this group chat, which started at the beginning of the season, and they do it every week. And look, the AFC West is not what we thought it would be, right? We thought it would be a monster. There's mediocrity, parity, whatever you want to call it, all over the conference. The Jets, if they can be 5-5, five and five, but that's going to be a challenge because the next game is at Green Bay. Then they've got at Denver with the floundering let's ride Broncos. But then they've got the Patriots at home the Bills at home and at New England. And we saw today that New England has, seems to have righted the ship. No surprise there. But after that, after that tough stretch, they've got, they've got the Bears, Lions, and Jaguars at home. So I'm going to predict, I'm going to go on the record here. I'm going to pencil the Jets in. I'm going to give them nine wins. Wow. Nine wins and a possible 
wild card playoff berth because of the mediocrity we see all over the AFC. Because the Jets are going to get better with each passing week. And um, all right, I'll go on a limb. Nine wins. How, what do you think about that? I think you really went out on a limb. I think you have made a lot of Jets fans a fan of you if they were not a fan already before. Now they're going I'm to not be, gonna a be a fan I'm not going to be a killjoy. I'm not going to be a killjoy on a day like today. Come on. It's a, You know what? Too good for a day. You don't want to kill gang green. It's not easy being green. We've heard all that stuff before. But there's hope for the Jets fans. It's coming from Steve Serby. I think they will like that. I think they'll appreciate that for sure. That is Steve Serby, New York Post sports columnist with a great insight. What's the Mets the score, Jets. by the way? What's the Mets score? Do not know. Have not been paying attention. Don't kill okay. anybody's don't don't kill anybody's joy here. We can't do that. We got to keep right. positive vibes. Positive vibes. We'll do that. Positive right, vibes only. Robert Sala. <laughs> there we go. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Steve. I'll see you in a flannel next week. <laughs> All right. <laughs>